Good evening, and welcome to the September 12th uh, meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, please note for um, all of us, uh, we don't have much of a public joining us this evening that this meeting is being recorded by uh, ACMI. So at this point, um, I'd like to um, uh, call, uh, take a roll call and ensure that all of the board members who are here are recognized, starting with Ken Lau. Present. Jean Benson. Present. I'm Rachel Zenberry and Steve Revelak. Good evening, Madam Chair. We also have um, Acting Director of Planning, uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, Kelly Linema, joining us this evening. Present. Um, and uh, Melissa uh, Tentacolis, our fifth board meeting, will not be joining us this evening, so we will be four tonight. Um, so at this point, we will go ahead and uh, start with our first agenda item, which is the MBTA Communities Update, and I will turn it over to uh, Kelly Lima. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so in the packet and also available on the, with the board's agenda is the presentation for tonight on MBTA Communities. I'm just going to walk you through each of those slides. So. Um, as many of you know, back in August, DHCD released its updated and final okay. guidelines regarding the MBTA Communities Act, which is um, mm -hmm. Mass General Law, Chapter 48, Section 3, 3A. Um, so tonight, I just wanted to share with you the <coughs> the legislation, just a reminder of what that law says, um, what the new DHCD guidelines say, and what that means for Arlington, and then how that relates to the climate law. Uh, pilot program, which is now interrelated with our compliance with MBTA communities. And then just talk a little bit about the timeline. And then if you, if you have any questions or comments, I can take those tonight. If I can't answer them yet, then I'll still follow up with you later. Uh, so as a reminder, um, every MBTA community per Section 3A is required to have a district of reasonable size in which multifamily housing is allowed by right. Um, what that means is we have to have a district of reasonable size. Um, we can't have age restrictions in the zoning. It has to be suitable for families with children. We have to have a minimum gross density within that district of 15 dwelling units per acre. And in the original law, it said that this district has to be not more than one half mile from a subway station or a bus station. That's changed, so I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Um, in August, as I mentioned, DHCD released the final guidelines, and these were revised, reflecting feedback from all of the communities um, in, that are subject to this legislation. Um, so I'm just going to go through what's changed. There's five key areas that have changed, although the last one is not necessarily part of DHCD guidance. Um, so the first one is that MBTA has revised the community category. So Arlington is now considered an adjacent community. We, in the prior version, we were a subway community. And that was because of our, originally because of our proximity to the Hale Lake uh, subway station. Although we've now been revised as an adjacent community, what the MBTA or what the DHCD did was that they heard comments from a lot of communities that have been categorized as bus communities or subway communities, even though there wasn't a subway station within their borders. And they revised the guidelines to reflect what are, what you could consider as like fixed transportation assets. So there's categories that were, like your sub a location of a subway station isn't going to change, or location of a uh, commuter rail station isn't going to change, but bus stations change all the time. And so that's why they eliminated the bus station category, and they now have this adjacent um, adjacent category. And so now Arlington is considered an adjacent mm -hmm. category. What that means is that our capacity has changed. So instead of having our instead of our zoning having to have um, have a capacity for 25% of our total housing units, that capacity has now been reduced to 10%. Capacity is a key concept in the DHCD <coughs> guidelines, and when they talk about capacity, they're not talking about units on top of what's already there. They're talking about units that could be produced by right if there was nothing there to begin with. And so, like for an example, if you had an MBT, if you had your multifamily district, and within that district you had 1,500 housing units, in Arlington, because of our capacity, that multifamily district would have to have a capacity of 2,046 units. So, if your current district has 1,500 units in it, you don't have to create zoning that allows for an additional 2,000 plus units on top of that. It just has to allow for the creation of 2,046 units by right. And so that 
you know, you may end up having more or less units in your district than what are currently there. It just reflects what has to be allowed by right. Um, DFCD also adjusted the reasonable size criteria. Um, part of this is based on developable land. So for Arlington, we have been reduced from 50 acres, which was the original minimum. We've been re that's been reduced to a uh, reasonable size of 32 acres. Now, this is something when we go back and we work with the community on the planning for this, it's going to require a little bit of a push and pull. Because if you take that 32 acres, you divide those 2,046 units by 32 acres, you still have a density of about 64 dwelling units per acre. And that may not be something that's, that's that the community is really interested in. If you instead say, okay, well, what if we had, if we met that DHCD requirement of 15 dwelling units per acre in order to have 15 dwelling units per acre and reach the capacity of 2,046 units, I believe our district size would then have to be about 130 acres or 135 mm -hmm. acres, something like that. So it's going to be a little bit of a push and pull. We also can do more than one district. We can have sub-districts where there's a higher density in one part of the district and then a lower density in the next district. So if we wanted to do something like a transect, that would be an opportunity for us to consider. Um, it doesn't have to be a uniform density, but we do have to have that average density of at least 15 dwelling units per acre. Um, I think one of the most interesting things about the way that the guidelines have been revised for Arlington is that we have been released from the requirement to have our district within a half mile of field plan. Um, one of the things that DHCD heard from a number of adjacent communities was that the area that's within a half mile dis distance of their transit station doesn't have a lot of developable land. And we have that situation in Arlington too. So DHCD set up a sliding scale and basically, if you have less than 100 developable acres within a half mile of your transit station, you're not required to locate your district within that within that um, half mile radius. Arlington has only 58 developable acres, according to DHCB, within a half mile of Alewife. Part of that's because so much of it, so much of that half mile radius from Alewife is actually in Cambridge, and part of it is because some of that's considered wetlands, and so we just don't have that much acreage within proximity to Alewife. And so we don't. We can locate our we can locate our district anywhere in Arlington that we want to. Um, the recommendation is that those that your districts be located along transit corridors or within close proximity to commercial corridors and that sort of thing. So we'll be working on that as we go back to the community. And then finally, um, regarding incentives, you know, we know that if you comply with MBTA community scheduling, you have the incentive of being, of being available. Of, being able to apply for master's grants and a number of other grant programs. What we suspected when this original legislation came out was that over time, additional things were gonna be tied to compliance. And we're already seeing that because Governor Baker signed into law the, um, the climate bill. And whether or not we can participate in a fossil fuel ban pilot program is gonna depend on whether or not we comply with any two communities. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So again, what this means for Arlington is that we have to have a district that's at least 32 acres where multifamily housing, which is three or more dwelling units, is allowed by right um, without age restrictions or bedroom limits, where it has a capacity for 2046 units, and then that district has to be at least, at least each district has to be at least five contiguous acres um, and recommended to be located along transit corridors and commercial centers. A few other things that are notable in the DHCD update is that we can require site plan review. Um, Arlington currently does not have site plan review. This is something we can we can have as part of the multifamily zoning, um, so long as it doesn't impose unreasonable delays. We also can have an affordability requirement. In the DHCD guidance, it says that it can be a maximum of 10%. However, because Arlington had an inclusionary zoning bylaw before um, Section 3A was enacted, we can have our inclusionary requirement be 15%. We can't increase that, and it also has to be 15, um, it also has to be set at a cap of 80% AMI, which I believe is a higher AMI than what our zoning, what our inclusionary zoning is. That said, we can still require that 15% of units um, be deemed restricted affordable. The 2022 Housing Production Plan did recommend that we take a look at our inclusionary zoning and kind of recalibrate it. 
and this is going to be a recommendation of the Affordable Housing Trust as well, that we start to look at, um, you know, payments in lieu of affordable housing or how we, how we sort of fine tune that. And so this is kind of something that's going to be wound up into this discussion around MBTA communities, is what, how can we actually incentivize the development of affordable housing? And if we can't incentivize that production, how can we then fund the affordable housing trust so that they can then go on to create and preserve affordable housing? And then finally, um, just among local requirements, we can't require multifamily housing to have a higher efficiency standards than other things. So if you don't require it of your single family homes, you can't require it of your multifamily homes that are within this multifamily district. Uh, we also can't require that it be combined with commercial or other uses. So you can't require mixed use. Mixed use is allowed. This may come into play as well when we start to think about if we're creating an overlay district, we may want to exempt certain zoning districts from that overlay district to, um, so as to continue to incentivize commercial development and uh, make sure that we're balancing commercial development with residential development. This is all going to be part of the community conversation. Um, so again, by complying, we remain eligible for a certain number of grant programs. And we also can participate in the Massachusetts Clean Energy Law Pilot Program. So a little bit on that. Um, back at Special Town Meeting 2020, this is November of 2020, which feels like a lifetime ago, mm -hmm. um, more than 90, 92% of town meeting members voted to approve the what was in short called the fossil fuel ban. And this was a home rule petition to allow the town to restrict new fossil fuel infrastructure um, that really impacts new buildings and major renovations. Because it's a home rule petition, we can't actually um, we can't actually apply, we can't actually use it as legislation in Arlington without the state granting us the ability to do so. Um, however, just last month, Governor Baker signed the new energy bill into law. And as part of that energy bill, it would allow Arlington to participate in a pilot program where we could, we could require that fossil fuel ban if we meet stated inclusionary housing policy by January of 2024. What the, what the law refers to as inclusionary housing policy is either that 10% of our housing is on our subsidized housing inventory. Arlington right now has a housing of, we have 6.5% of our total housing, sorry, 6.54% of our total housing units are on our deep restricted affordable or on our subsidized housing inventory. Um, so between now and January 2024, given that gap between 6.54% and 10%, we're, we're not going to get to 10%. So what that means for Arlington is that our best avenue, if we want to participate in this pilot program, our best avenue for doing that is making sure that we're in compliance with MBTA communities for January 2024. This does affect our timeline a little bit. So I do have a slide in here about the timeline. This month, DHCD is releasing a compliance model. So this is an Excel model that connects with GIS and it allows us to sort of test out what our current density is. We can play around with different areas and see, um, you know, as we go through different scenarios with the community, we can see like what would be in compliance and what wouldn't. And that's the model that we're eventually gonna have to submit to DHCD in order to, in order to verify that we are in compliance. We will also this month and into October be applying for technical assistance. So this is going to mean we're applying for either um, Mass Housing Partnership or um, MAPC to assign a consultant to help us with the community engagement process and with the technical aspects of creating this selling. By January of next year, we have to submit an action plan to DHC. And that means we have to tell DHCD either what we're already doing and, and what the plan is in order to get our MBTA community zoning approved. Um, basically laying out milestones by one by one, just to maintain, just to demonstrate that we're still in compliance. And then by, according to the legislation of Section 3A, by December 31 of 2024, that's our deadline for town meeting to approve MBTA community zoning if we want to remain in compliance. However, if we want to participate in this fossil fuel pilot program, we need to actually comply. We need to actually do that by January, which is almost a full year earlier than the, than the um, DSTD deadline. So that's just going to be part of the conversation as well as how do we make sure that we're, if, if the community wants to participate in this pilot program, how do we make sure that we have an efficient schedule, but also that we're hearing enough from people and we're engaging appropriately in the development of this zone. <laughs> 
So this is something we're going to be talking about a lot in the next couple of months, especially as our new director comes on board. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions now that you might have or take notes and get back to you soon. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly, for putting this um, presentation together. This answers several of my questions, so I appreciate this. Um, uh, let's go ahead and start with questions for Kelly, starting with Kim. One of the things I had asked you, well, I'm curious about is if we're going away from fossil fuels, uh, have you done a study or at least looked at the <clears throat> infrastructure? Uh, do we have enough infrastructure in Arlington to handle that going forward? Or are we uh, saying, okay, we want all this, we have all these new buildings, but we, we don't have any infra infrastructure to uh, meet that demand? Uh, I run that through a lot of projects where you are changing use of the building. Let's say from a regular office building to a life science building, the requirements for the power is greatly increased. And so you're bringing a whole new service. So I'm looking in terms of if, if the town is switching to uh, fossil free uh, fuel, does, does the town have enough uh, infrastructure to handle that? Uh, I'm not asking for an answer. Because <laughs> I don't have it. <laughs> but, but I can tell you, so that was something that also came up during the discussion around town meeting, I believe. The, the fossil fuel ban would apply to smaller projects. I believe anything larger than 10,000 square feet, there's a little bit more. I'm going to have to go back into the legislature that what was approved and to the warrant article to verify this, but I do recall that larger developments um, had some flexibility. So. It's really applying to more of like single family, two family, three family developments. Um, again, I'll have to verify that. And I think the other thing just to keep in mind is that, yes, we're gonna make sure, we're gonna have to make sure that we have the infrastructure to do it. The rate of how that's actually gonna roll out is not such that the demand is gonna suddenly be overwhelmed. But it, that question. is a question we're gonna have to answer. I also have mm -hmm. like, the other source is our electric supplier in our town and for any new service it's a three to four month uh, wait mm -hmm. just to get service in uh, do we have ever so spying saying that they will try to step up or we are if you're looking at it as a owner or a developer you're stuck to ever sources whim and they'll give you that you want to get around to it yeah, I know several projects around out in our town that have stopped. Uh, one one good one was um, 81 on the Broadway, the, uh, the affordable housing. 117? Yeah. Um, the contractor left for three months while they're waiting for Eversource to give them power. So it added close to half a year to the whole project because Eversource wasn't capable of bringing power there. Uh, and then we also should look into coming from Eversource to help us here. It's one of the things I think we should also look into. It's just a real hard fact that if we do this, it's still right. So That's all you have? Okay. Well, it's more, but I, I figured. No, I mean, if you have other questions, no, I, I will reserve because I'm sure you guys can ask the same thing. Okay, sounds good. Go ahead, Gene. I promise not to ask him. <laughs> um, you know, building on what Ken said, an interesting thing would be to have my DPW confirm the capacity of the water and sewer infrastructure. I believe it has capacity, but that issue came up at town meeting last year about allowing two families and single family zones. And I don't think we got the clearest answer for sure about, about it. So I think that um, as we roll out the public input process, in addition to trying to figure out what will ever source the next deployment, 
the town has to know when they have it has the readiness of infrastructure um, to do this. Even though it's going to be a slow road, I can understand that. But if there are going to be questions that get raised again. Um, I can somewhat respond to that. So when we did our 2022 housing production plan, I know there were a few residents who disagreed with this, but we did have um, um, Horsley Witten on board to do our infrastructure study, which is required as part of a housing production plan. So if you, because you're talking about, you know, you're, you're, the recommendation of the plan is to do 99 new units a year, which is far more than what Arlington currently does, um, produces in a given year. The housing production plan is required to do that infrastructure study, and Horsley went in, in discussions and review of our infrastructure did not feel that we had any capacity issues. But I do understand that that's something that's going to be brought up again in this discussion. Yeah, and um, Horsley went said that, but I'm not sure that the town officials said it the way they wanted to say it. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing, and it's not on here, and maybe we'll talk about this after after these, is what's the public participation process going to be, and what's the role of the redevelopment board and the members in it, because I would not like to have a situation where there's a public process and then something's presented to us without our having <coughs> participation in the process. That's the other thing I mentioned. Great. And I, I do think that's something that we can also discuss in the retreat, too, is, is the level of involvement that this board wants to have, either leading that process or, or even like dictating a working group to, to advance this process so that you're okay. Because this is going to come back to you before it's not needed. Yeah. So that's it. Great. Good questions. Steve? Um, I don't have any questions, but I do have a comment or two or a thought. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Uh, so thought number one, I, over the weekend, I was looking at our housing production plan and fair housing action plan. Now, goal number two of the housing production plan is compliance with this, but there are a number of other goals in that plan and in the fair housing action plan that could be ways to implement MBTA community requirements. So I'm, I'm hoping that we could treat this not as a high level goal into it of itself, but really make this about how do we want to approach multifamily housing in Arlington, but do it in a way that um, gains us compliance. Um, the other uh, the other comment is regarding outreach. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about how the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board did their targeted outreach because you know we know that in theory, anyone can come to a public meeting and participate, but that's not what happens. Right. Um, so in order to get a broader and more representative set of input, um, I'd like to understand what strategies that they used and what we might also consider. Yeah, thank you, Steve. That, um, I think that the work that the trust has done around the action plan is a really good model mm -hmm. for how to engage with particular communities that um, aren't well represented in public forums right now. And so I think that's it's definitely something to look at as we go forward in this planning process. Anything else? Nothing else? Great. Um, the only two questions I had um, were a little bit more <clears throat> technical in nature in terms of um, the ADU um, bylaw that we have uh, as of right in both the single family as well as two family districts do does does the ADU which effectively creates three to four units potentially in a two family home is that in any way um, taken into account as part of the creation of multifamily three plus units because I, I didn't see anything about um, ADUs addressed in, in this. And I know where Arlington's the only <laughs> town, I think, right now in Massachusetts, unless something has passed this past year that is allowing them as of right. Particularly in two families. In two families. Yeah. So um, that would be something. Yes. I think the answer <clears throat> is because we limit the size of ADUs, and this does not allow you to limit the size of the units mm -hmm. that we're not going to be able okay. to count ADUs. I, I, 
I submitted significant comments yes. to the HCD on the first guidelines, which I thought were terrible. These are okay. The first ones are terrible. So they, they definitely improved. Right. And I mentioned they should mm -hmm. allow ADUs, but it didn't, it didn't right. happen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, that would that's a, a, a good answer for that one. Um, and then um, you had mentioned the um, re the requirement, um, the, the limit actually on um, affordable housing yes. units, which are allowed, and the fact that we have our inclusionary zoning currently in effect. If we create a new district, is my only question, um, it, and I would need to go back and look and see how our inclusionary zoning bylaw is written. Um, it's very specific that if a new district is created, then it cannot, then it has to be up to 10%. It can't be above that. So I would want us to just take a look and see whether or not our inclusionary zoning bylaw is written in such a way so that it still would apply to new districts or if it's only, um, written to apply to those that are currently on the books. And DHCD, <clears throat> you do have to submit your pre-existing right. inclusionary zoning to DHCD for approval, and so that would be part of the discussion okay. with DHCD as well, because we yeah. don't want to assume that something complies when it might not actually comply. Great. Well, it seems like we have a lot of work ahead of us before the January 31st, 2023 deadline for an action plan. So, um, Jean? Yeah, the only thing I want to mention in terms of timing mm -hmm. is on the MBTA piece necessary for the um, fossil free, we would probably have to go to town meeting in spring or fall right. 2023 yeah. if we wanted to meet that deadline so we can put it off until 2020. Absolutely. Yeah. No, we would either need to either do this as part of um, annual time meeting oh, or we would need to do a special time meeting in the fall. Um, the other thing that I've sent in on a couple of webinars now, and the other thing to note is for DHCD, the attorney general does not have to have approved our zoning by the deadlines. I don't know if that situation is the same for compliance with if we wanted to participate in the fossil fuel program. So the, we also have to, if that's something that we need to figure out, and I'll be working with Talia Fox, who's our sustainability mm -hmm. manager, to try to understand like if we are going to aim to do this so that we can still participate in that pilot program. I just want to make sure that we're scheduling that special town meeting, if it's going to be a special town meeting, to make sure that we still have enough time for the attorney general to review and approve the zoning if that is going to be a requirement. Because that can take 90 days. All right. Any other questions for Kelly before we move on to the second agenda item? Yes. So, um, I've been speaking to Pat Allen, and he's told me that we are trying to get in now um, because we have the safe harbor. Can you predict what's going to happen? We have safe harbor through um, the 17th of this month. Right, right. So, um, I don't think that we're going to end up being right. able to. So. Yeah, I guess the one other route regarding the 10% and, and our housing production plan is that if you have a certified housing production plan, then you could also participate in the pilot program. But with our, so our, our 2016 housing production plan was certified in September of last year because of the ZBA's approval of the comprehensive permit application for 1165 RMSF, which led us to be able to add 124 housing units to our subsidized housing inventory. In order to get our next, in order to get our current HPP certified, we would need to have a production or the addition of 99 new units added to our subsidized housing inventory within a, within um, a 12 month period. And I don't believe that we have enough housing in the pipeline to actually um, get us to that, which is why I'm saying that we essentially would need to comply with MBTA communities in order to participate in the pilot program. One last compliance question. Yeah. Um, so the we, I understand that 10% of your own housing in, units on the, on the subsidized housing inventory is one way to do it. 
um, adopting uh, MBTA community zoning is, is another way. My understanding is that the one and a half percent general land area measurement threshold does not come into play here. I just wanted to. No, it's not an inclusionary okay. housing policy, and it okay. doesn't. It's not included as part of the, the uh, legislation. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that will lead us directly into our second agenda item, which is the ARB retreat planning. Um, <clears throat> we had two weekends identified for uh, potential dates for the retreat. Um, and obviously this item will be a major portion of the retreat agenda. Um, so Kelly, I'm not sure if you have had a chance to reach out to, to Claire yet to see her availability, but perhaps we could start there and then um, talk about um, both agenda as well as date and time. So Claire is available all four dates to be reserved. Okay. Um, we asked everyone to hold the September 24, September 25, and then I believe October 15 or October 16 on the calendars. Um, she's available all four dates with a preference for some days, um, yep. but it's not a limiting factor. Great. Um, one item we should all be aware of is that if we select the 24th or the 25th, that will be five days after she starts. So, um, although I'd love to do this sooner rather than later, I also want to be mindful of, uh, you know, whether or not that makes sense or whether we, um, it, I, I could see it either way being either beneficial that we, um, set an agenda early on in her tenure or allow her to, um, take some time and get her feet under her before we uh, we meet. <clears throat> so I'd like to canvas through and, and um, see people's opinion on that and to also verify that those dates are still available for everyone else. So Ken, uh, we could start with you. Um, both dates are available for the right now, so I'm wide open. But I would prefer uh, September. And just walking in the folks and just talking to her and get, to know her better. I don't think we, from the retreat, we're not going to get into details of asking her too much. We can just brainstorm. So I think it's okay, in my opinion, that we, uh, she hasn't really gotten into the nitty gritty really sure. Okay. Gene? I agree. And also because I'm only 50% sure I can be here the 15th and 16th. Okay, well, then that's that. <laughs> but I know I can be here the 24th and 25th of this month. Okay. Um, you know, in terms of whether five days is enough, I I think that is really a question for Ms. Ricker, um, and I can't answer that for her. Um, I'm happy to meet in September, although I would prefer the 15th to the, or the 25th to the 24th, Sunday to Saturday. Yeah, me too, I like Sunday, but either works. Great. Super. So it sounds like there's a preference for the uh, September 25th. Or so 24th. It, well, you know, I, I think you had a slight preference for the 25th, as did um, Claire. So um, I and I, I have a preference for the morning on either date. I do have um, commitments in the after afternoon. Morning is much better. Yeah. Morning is better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So. Um, if it would work for the board, I can work together with Kelly and um, see if we can identify a, a location. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that we did, did we do 9 a.m., 9 to 12 last time? Was it 8? It seemed like we were pretty early. I think it was pretty <laughs> early. It was at the community room in the... It was. And the year before that, it was in the library in um, uh, Waltham. It's a nice space too. So, uh, although I'm not sure their availability to open that on Sunday morning, I'm not sure what their hours are. So, uh, this would be nice. Um, yeah. So I will be or I will be uh, trans transporting myself by bicycle. So, um, Waltham is okay, but. Let's not go far, too far. Though. Okay, that's good. Good feedback. Good feedback. So yeah, we can we can definitely try and find a place um, in town. 
and um, try and uh, look for the morning of the 25th, either starting at 8 or 9. Okay. Great. I'm meeting with Claire tomorrow as well. Oh, perfect. She's starting before she's starting. She's already. Of course, that's just the way it works. Uh, Steve? Yes? If things are ever mm -hmm. in a distance, just ask, I'll give you a right. Okay, well, thank you again. Future other things, not just this one here, but you know. <clears throat> Great. Um, and then in terms of agenda, um, I'd like to see if um, we could collect a few items that uh, the board members would, would like to include. I have um, a few that I've been um, keeping a list of, which I will, um, which I can send out in a memo format so that we can work through an agenda together with, um, with Kelly prior to the 24th, um, so we need to post that agenda. The 20th. The 20th. Well, probably the 21st. The 21st, okay. So we have a little bit of time to work on that, but not much. I thought we have a uh, retreat. We don't need to post anything. We just need to post, no don't we need to post notice of the meeting? Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Well, we need an agenda, though, ahead of time for, for, us, yes, for the yes. board. Yes. So we're holding the 25th at 9 o'clock right now, right? Yes. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, um, a few items that I currently have on um, my list, and I need to go back and, and do a more comprehensive review here, but um, we had talked last year um, about permit application processing and um, finding a way to simplify and, and um, create an electronic version of that. And I believe, Kelly, that's already, there's a group that's in process with that. First today, so. Fabulous. Yeah. Great. So we can talk a little bit about that. Um, we talked about a joint meeting with the select board regarding the housing production plan. Um, and I think bringing them up to speed as well with the MBTA community so that they understand um, potential changes that will occur um, is something I'd like to add to our agenda. And again, I'll, I'll email this out. Um, <clears throat> can I know that you had talked about um, when Jenny departed, wanting to make sure that we look at more robust ways to continue the work with the 3D SketchUp tool. And I think especially given this MBTA communities piece, that that might be a tool, a visualization tool that will be helpful mm -hmm. to the public as well. Um, we had also talked about inviting Beth Locke from the Chamber of Commerce to a future meeting. Um, and I think it would be great at the retreat if we talked about what we'd like to accomplish and um, you know what we'd like to specifically chat with her mm -hmm. about. Um, the, uh, the town did vote to fund commercial design, the commercial development design standards um, at town meeting. So um, I think we should chat about that and our goals uh, for those standards. And there were several items coming from our last hearing um, related to zoning bylaw clarifications that um, we had identified we wanted to put on our radar for this upcoming town meeting. Things that were less than clear that we had to deal with for the first time. Mm -hmm. And maybe some things <clears throat> that now that we've had a couple of years under our belt, we don't think of them. Sure. How, Absolutely. How long we've Absolutely. Had. Clarifications. So those are the items I'm tracking currently. Yeah, I was thinking one item in, in terms of zoning edits. I was actually thinking of the stormwater management requirements for the yes. industrial zone. Uh, because I recall that being a, a, yes. an ambiguous stumbling block. Yeah, that's one of the things we need to fix. The, the um, what storm event particularly? Right, because right one. now if you <clears throat> request to have the additional it's square footage or yeah. story, you have to retain all the storm water on site, right. which is like impossible. Right. So we need to yeah. revise and kind of have part of the
Can I have one more? Uh, please, why don't we start with you, Ken, and then we'll run through and... I just want to add one more for now. Sure. And more later on. Okay. When you said that you're, the one I want to talk about is a review of the last two years, uh, crew projects, uh, where they stand right now, where, where they're moving ahead, and how we go about encouraging Street. I didn't talk a little more streamlining, but just how the board feels toward supporting future projects. Because right now we, we are too few and far behind, and I don't know how we can get better at this or you know, make it uh, more streamlined. Right now, there seems to be when people talk about doing any development in Arlington, it's all it's a headache. There's a lot of things you have to go through, a lot of hurdles you have to jump through. And there's no straight, you know, here's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you can apply here, 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 and you get your permit. Or some of that where it says you may or may not get your permit, depending on what the whim is. Or what, it's un anything that's unforeseen that's not planned, I don't think that helps with uh, development. It's something that's one. And also address what we've done and uh, stuff we approved. And, uh, why they haven't gone ahead, or why they are going ahead, or you know, this helps us with when we uh, decide on projects. Great, Gene. Um, <clears throat> no, I'll, okay. I, mean, I said there are some things that um, we might want to change in the zoning, but I have to give it some thought. Okay, so we'll have... great. Steve. Yeah, I mean, we do have a we have a an action packed year ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if I were to add anything to that, um, you know, maybe consideration of adopting a process for uses a lot by right, but with site plan review. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one for MBTA community requirements, but second, I've had the opportunity to talk with a couple of smaller builders. Um, who you know, uh, told me that for, from their perspective, um, the ability to do things by right is far more attractive and than special permits just because of certainty and it's also easier to get funding when you're built, doing something about, that the by right is. So um, I'd like to look at ways that we could maybe tailor to, or cater to that. Great. Um, I think that the other thing we should all commit to doing is um, circulating our goals that came out of um, our 2021 uh, retreat and uh, review, identify, and prioritize some of those as well. As well. There were quite a few on there um, that I think, given what we have on our plate, we may want to deprioritize at, at this time. Not abandoned because there is plenty of time to tackle those in the future, but I think we may need to streamline um, what, we, what we focus on this year. Yeah, I would hate that MBTA communities to be the only I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I please. Mean, one of the things that uh, Jenny did line up for us before leaving was some funding to sort of begin the process for a master plan update which is a very large undertaking. Um, and I think we would potentially wrap a number of the ARB schools <laughs> together. Yes, um, absolutely. And so that may be something that we want to discuss as part of the Agreed. No, I, I, Gina, I completely agree with you. I think that um, spurring economic development in our business corridors was a very large focus of our last meeting and I definitely would not want that to be completely pushed to the side while we focus on MBT community. So I definitely agree with you on that. We also have the job posting going up very soon. It wasn't already posted today for the economic development coordinator. Oh great. So. Fantastic. Super. Uh, anything else on A or B retreat planning? before we move to the next agenda item. Yes. Quick request, if yes. anyone has any food allergies or things that you avoid, 
um, you can just let me know via email. Okay. Will do. Thank you. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and move to meeting minutes, agenda item number three, um, which may go quickly because I think a lot of us have already submitted um, some of these in advance, uh, but we do have quite a few to roll through here. So let's start with the agenda, uh, excuse me, with the meeting minutes from Monday, April 25th, 2022. Um, and in addition to um, those comments that have already been submitted, are there any additional um, comments or corrections for this set of meeting minutes? I didn't see the comments that were submitted. Uh, the, they, they are currently posted. I think that Mary compiled them. Um, yes. If you, are you on the online? No. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're able to, I'm not sure if you're connected online. Okay. I can run through what they are. That would be helpful too. I think Mary left them in red. And she did. Lines crossed yep. out and everything else. So that was very nice of her. Good, Gina. Second to oh yeah. Connect. If you have any problems, then I'll just run through them. Um, so there were uh, three minor corrections here uh, on the April 25th meeting minutes, and I'll just run through and see if there are any other uh, corrections, starting with Ken. Nope. Mine corrections are... Okay, great. Gene? No, nope, no others. Nothing Steve? here. And nothing further for me. So is there a motion to approve the April 25th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. Take a vote. Kim? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So the meeting minutes have been approved unanimously for April 25th. We'll now move to the April 27th meeting minutes, which have minor corrections included on page two, three, just two and three. So we'll give everyone a minute to take a look at those. And I'll start with Kim to see if you have any further additions or corrections. No, I'm all set. Jean? None. Steve? No. And I am all set as well. So is there a motion to approve the uh, April 27th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Kim. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the meeting minutes for April 27th have been approved unanimously. Let's move to May 2nd. And there were no corrections to the May, tw uh, excuse me, May 2nd meeting minutes. We'll see if there are any further, starting with Kim. No. Jean? None. Steve? No. And none from me either. Is there a motion to approve the May 2nd 2022 meeting minutes as submitted. So motion. Second? Second. I uh, will take a vote with Ken. Yes. Gene? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved unanimously. Let's move to the May 4th. We met a lot, a lot of April and May. <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, we'll go to the May 4th meeting minutes. which were one page with no additions or corrections. Uh, Ken, did you have any further? No. Nope. Jean? No. Steve? No. And I did not either. Is there a motion to approve the May 4th, 2022 meeting minutes as submitted? So motion. Second. Uh, start, we'll vote starting with Ken. Yes. 
Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The Monday, May 4th, 2022 meeting minutes have been approved unanimously. And let's move to the May 2nd, excuse me, May 16th, 2022 meeting minutes. And I believe there were, there were not, there were no modifications to this set of meeting minutes. Uh, Kim, any additional? Nope. Jean? No. Steve? No. And no as well. Is there a motion to approve the May 16th, 2022 meeting minutes as submitted? So motion. Second. I will take a vote starting with Kim. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This has been approved unanimously. Let's move to the May 23rd, 2022 meeting minutes. And those as well have no uh, additions or corrections. Ken, any further? No. Jean? No. Steve? No. No as well. Is there a motion to approve the May 23rd, 2022 meeting minutes as submitted? So motion. Second. Uh, we'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been approved unanimously. So I have too many windows open. Okay. Uh, let's move to the June 27th meeting minutes. And those do not have any additions or corrections. Um, we'll start with uh, Kim to see if there are any additional. No. You know, there were, I, I did um, make corrections on this, so she okay. didn't highlight these. Okay. Um, Hang on, let me open the uh, word notice. Yeah. Oh, it was on the 27th. Okay. The 27th. They weren't major. I just identified that Melissa had joined the meeting in progress. Um, I have to go back to my email to see if there were any others. Kelly, I don't know if you have the... I have your email. Um, I know I said something about wart. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, there was a spelling mistake here. Mm -hmm. I don't think there were any others. Yes, I have um, Melissa to talk about the meeting in progress. And then Steve's note. Located in bold, the board will grant the request to the to decrease vehicle parking to zero as it is in the public interest. So it's okay. That's right. So there are, um, are there any additional uh, corrections to the meeting minutes, starting with Kim? Uh, this is for June 27th, right? June 27th, correct. Yeah, I have none for June 27th. Jean? No. Steve? I know as well. Um, is there a motion to approve the June 27th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. Take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Uh, Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That was unanimously approved. We'll now move to uh, July 11th, 2022. And these do have the changes um, captured in red, as you can see on page two, three, two, and three. Give everyone a chance to take a look. <clears throat> Ken, do you have any additional corrections? No, I've got the change that ahead. Okay. Uh, Jean? Um, no. Okay. Steve? No. And I do not either. Uh, is there a motion to approve the July 11th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those have been unanimously approved. And our final set of meeting minutes are the uh, July 25th, 2022 meeting minutes. And those have corrections on uh, page one, page six, page seven, page eight, and that is all.
then want to check it a second to take a look at those. <clears throat> and are there any other uh, additions or corrections starting with Kin? One quick second, I'm still trying to get Sure, it. absolutely. Take take your time. Good, thank you. Okay, Gene? No others. Steve? Nothing here. All right, and I'm good as well. Is there a motion to approve the July 25th, 2022 meeting minutes as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken? Yes. Gene? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm in yes as well. Uh, the July 20 25th meeting minutes have been approved unanimously. And that closes agenda item number three. Thank you, Kelly, and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this video with all of those minutes. Gene, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gene. Yes. Did you review them? I reviewed well? them before you got them. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's a lot of work. Much easier to, uh... Yes, you didn't see them. <laughs> Great. Um, let's see. So that closes agenda item number three. Um, we'll now move to agenda item number four open forum, but seeing no members of the public joining us this evening. We will go ahead and uh, close the open forum. And can I uh, say something? yeah, we can. If there's any new business, now would be the time. Uh, I just want to spend a few minutes and thank Kelly for her great uh, job. Here, here. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Uh, Fantastic. Done. You had quite a bit of work for her on your shoulders, and I think you did really well. Thank you. Absolutely. Three people's work on your shoulders because. <laughs> Don't want to go out and recognize that's all. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Um, any other new business? No? All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. I'll second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Gene? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.